G'day cobbers, welcome back to the bush. In this episode of Lock Alps 4 Driving, we're checking out the GSL Electronics Easy As Alternator Sensing Relay. Now, if you've got a DC-DC charger, something like this in the back of your four-wheel drive, charging up those batteries, well, if it works as advertised, it pretty much should be compulsory. Now, the relay has three modes. It has a VSR mode, which is a voltage sensitive relay mode where it turns on above a certain voltage and turns off below a certain voltage. Nothing too interesting there, but the last two are. They're both alternator sensing relay modes. The first one only activates when the alternator is actually running. It senses the AC in the lines coming out of your alternator and will turn the lights of your DC-DC charger on. And the third mode is an alternator sensing with override mode. So not only does it need to sense the alternator, but you need to have the switch on as well. And we'll be testing all of them. First, let's check out how a conventional charging system works. So now, first up, let's have a look at a conventional charging setup. On the left-hand side, we have the start battery, which is currently sitting at 12.4 volts. Our alternator, which obviously only produces energy when the engine's running. A voltage gauge, so we know what's going on. The DC-DC charger, which is off at the moment, and our accessory battery, which is a lithium ion phosphate battery, currently sitting at 13 volts. Okay, let's turn on the engine. Obviously, our alternator starts producing energy and brings up the voltage to the start battery of 14.2 volts, which is reflected in this gauge. These DC-DC chargers usually have a factory set or programmable threshold voltage, above which they actually turn on. 14.2 volts will be enough to turn on this DC-DC charger. And once it does, it starts charging this accessory lithium ion phosphate battery. And we get a charge voltage in this one with this DC-DC charger of 14.6 volts. That's how a vast majority of DC-DC chargers and accessory batteries work. Righto, now let's turn off that engine. And that obviously reduces the voltage to the start battery, below which the threshold again is set in that DC-DC charger, turns that DC-DC charger off, back to our lithium ion phosphate battery and you're back to whatever state of charge is in that battery. That's how a vast majority, I'd say 80 plus percent of DC DC chargers are set up. And it works for a vast majority of the time, but not all the time. There's a couple of caveats, which we're going to get to in a minute. And here's the first issue. Now, probably like me, you don't drive your four wheel drive every single day. It might be a weekend machine. So you might need to keep your start battery topped up with either an AC charger or maybe even solar. So let's put an AC charger on there. That's a Victron 1.1 amp, which is more than enough to keep your start battery topped up. So it increases the voltage to your battery at 14.2 volt as it's charging. The problem with that, of course, is the DC-DC charger sees this increasing voltage above its threshold to turn on and turns on so it starts charging your accessory batteries as well and you think to yourself well beauty <laughs> get the two for one deal there not only will my start battery be charged but my accessory battery will be charged as well well it could be but probably not and here's why so we're only getting 1.1 amps out of that charger but our dc dc charger operates in an efficiency of 87% at 30 amps. If your battery's down a bit, it's going to be sucking down every one of those 30 amps and it'll be taking out of the start battery 34.5 amps, which is a little bit more than 1.1 amps that's being thrown in by this AC charger. And what will happen is you'll end up with a net loss of 33.4 amps coming out of that start battery. And what happens next time you want to start it up? <laughs> <laughs> it's either flat or it's suffered enough from sulfation that it's stuffed. <laughs> either way, not a good situation. And that's the problem with charging your start battery with an AC or solar or something like that when you're running a DC-DC charger that just operates off threshold voltage. And look, I know there'll be some people currently screaming at their computer or mobile phone saying, Simon, you've missed the Captain Obvious. You can just hook up an ignition wire to the input of the DC-DC charger. Now, that will work in some scenarios, don't get me wrong. But not all scenarios. If this is mounted up the other end of your caravan, and I'm looking at you, Red Ark, for this one, their ignition sense wire on their latest chargers has its own low voltage cutout. So if it's less than 12 volts, 
Well, your DC-DC doesn't operate. So unless you run a piece of welding cable <laughs> from your ignition system right down to the back of your caravan where your batteries are located underneath the seat or whatever, you probably won't get the thing to turn on anyway. And you need to find an alternative. Now let's check out the Easy As Smart Relay in VSR mode. Now VSR stands for Voltage Sensitive Relay. And for those who are familiar with them, the old Red Arc Smart Isolators, they operate in a very similar fashion. Okay, let's check it out. So here's our start battery at 12.4 volts. Our alternator, well the engine's not running so it's not producing any energy at our alternator. And our accessory battery, again, is sitting at 12 volts. Righto. Let's check out the differences here. So we have the Easy As Relay here, and we have a second relay here, a heavy duty relay, for reasons that will become apparent in just a moment. Let's check out the wiring for the Easy As. So pin three has a positive coming from the alternator and the positive side of the battery. Pin two goes to the positive side of our second heavy duty relay, and pin one and pin five go directly to earth. Okay, okay let's turn on that engine and see what happens. Fire up the engine, what happens? Well, firstly, we start charging that battery with 14.2 volts. Now, the Easy As Smart Relay in VSR mode has a turn on voltage, and unfortunately, it's not programmable, but it's set at a pretty decent rate of 13 volts. So, when you get 13 volts in between this point here and this point here, well, it's going to turn on, and then energy starts flowing to that second relay, and the second relay turns on. Okay, so now we've got a direct line heading into that second battery and it heads up to 14.2 volts, so we're actually charging that battery. Now, the reason we need the second relay, of course, is the Easy As Relay is only rated to 8 amps. If you're putting 160 amps out of that alternator and the accessory battery is able to take that full 180 amps, well, <laughs> you'd be in a spot of bother running it through an 8 amp relay. So we have a nice, big, heavy duty, maybe 200 amp relay here, and Bob's your uncle. And just like the Red Arc Smart Isolator, the Easy As Relay has a turn off voltage in VSR mode. And that voltage is 12.5 volts. So let's turn off the engine, and hence the energy coming out of the alternator. We're still sitting at 14.2, so we have to wait for the voltage to drop off enough till it reaches below 12.5. So when we get to 12.4, well, then this relay will turn off and the energy will stop going into this battery and it'll be at whatever state of charge it's at. At this case, it's 12.4 volts. Okay, so that's how the Easy As Smart Relay works in VSR mode. So let's check out how it works in VSR mode. So I've got a power supply here, variable voltage power supply. The output, which you can see on this multimeter here, the Easy As Relay, and the output from this Mushi meter here comes onto the mobile phone so you'll be able to see the voltage. I've also got a 12 volt, 20 watt globe there. And that'll draw a little bit over an amp, about 1.2 amps or thereabouts. But we'll see if it actually switches on at 13 volts and turns back off at 12.5. Okay, so I'll turn on the power supply. As you can see, we're getting about 12.6 volts there, so it shouldn't turn on to 13 volts. So I'll slowly start ramping up the voltage. So in the manual, it should be on by now. Not quite. You'll be able to see this one illuminate soon. So it's 13.2 volts, 13.3 volts, 13.4 volts. And there we go, in between 13.4 and 13.5 volts, it illuminated. So let's start ramping it down now, and we'll see when it turns off. And the spec says it's supposed to turn off at 12.5 volts. So we're now approaching, there we go. So in between about 12.7 and 12.6 volts. Now, interestingly, if you don't have a load on the output, you'll get hot voltage on the outside. If you want to fix that up, well, you're going to need a pull-down resistor. These ones are 22 kilo ohm resistors. I'm assured by GSL, the manufacturers of this relay, that the later models actually have a pull-down resistor in them, and you don't need a pull-down resistor like this over the output in between pin two and pin one. So that works fine. Let's go on with actually testing it in AS mode. Now you're probably not thinking about getting 
And easy as smart relay for its BSR capabilities. And quite frankly, why would you? There are cheaper, better options available out there in the market. But none with the AS Magic <laughs> or the alternating sensing mode. Okay, and this is how you wire it up. So negative goes to pin one. Pin five this time, however, is not connected to earth or negative. It's floating. It's not connected to anything. And pin two, well, that goes to the ignition sensing input of your DC-DC charger. And finally, pin three, well, that goes directly to the positive side of your battery. Let's start up that car and see what happens. So we start up the car. Of course, we're getting voltage and energy to the start battery. 14.2 volts in this case. But we also start getting a little bit of AC ripple right throughout the wiring in the car. Now, for those who aren't familiar with alternators, alternators are called alternators because they produce alternating current. Very similar in configuration to what comes out of your wall socket. That is also an alternating current. But what happens in the back of the alternator usually is it's what's called rectified and regulated. So it's made into a pretty good impersonation of DC. It's not quite as clean as what will come out of a battery, which is 100% DC, but it's pretty close. But they can't get rid of that tiny little bit of AC ripple that makes its way into the DC when you're using an alternator. Okay, the Easy Ad Smart Relay can see this AC ripple, and when it sees this AC ripple, it says, okay, time to start conducting energy from pin three to pin two, and it turns on our DC-DC charger, and hence, we start getting some charge into our accessory battery. Beautiful, everything working fine so far. So what happens when you turn off the engine? Well, let's turn off the engine and check it out. So when we turn off the engine, all of a sudden, the alternator stops and the AC ripple stops. As soon as that happens, pin three isn't seeing any AC ripple anymore and therefore stops sending energy to pin two and straight away turns off your DC-DC charger regardless of the state of charge of your start battery. Absolutely fantastic. As soon as the engine's off, the DC-DC charger stops. And therefore, of course, your accessory battery stops receiving charge and retains whatever charge it has in the battery. And as I said before, it doesn't rely on the state of charge of the start battery to determine whether the DC-DC is operational or not. And that's one big advantage. Well, what happens if it's six or eight weeks to our next big camping adventure? Well, we want to keep our start battery in tip-top condition, so let's put an AC charger across it. But what happens to the rest of the circuit? Well, we're not producing any AC from the alternator because the engine's not running. Therefore, the energy heading to pin three of the Easy As Relay doesn't transmit to pin two, therefore not turning on the DC-DC charger. Beauty, okay, so we're charging just the battery with 1.1 amps of Victron Dancing Pixie goodness. That is problem solved. Now, before we head out to the car, I wanted to make sure that AS mode isn't some sort of pseudo VSR mode. So I've got our variable voltage power supply here. Again, we can see the output on this multimeter and we can see the output from the Easy As via the mushy meter on this phone. This time it's wired with earth to pin one. The output's on pin two and pin three is our input. Pin five, this time, instead of being connected to earth, is floating. So let's turn on the power supply, and as you can see, we've got about 12 volts there, so we'll start ramping it up. Now remembering it activated in VSR about 13.4 volts, we're up 13.6, we're up over 14 volts, we're up to 14.6, 14.7 volts input, but nothing on the output, and this lamp isn't illuminated. So, it's definitely not in VSR mode, and that's as much voltage as you'll see in the input for any car. If it's over that sort of voltage <laughs> from your alternator, you need to start asking questions. All right, let's take it out to the car and test it there. Okay, we're now out of the car. We've just got those three wires connected for the standard AS mode. We've got 12.4 volts coming from the battery. I'm going to start up the vehicle and see how it works. Okay, so as you can see, 
There is a tiny bit of a delay built into the Easy As unit there, but uh, seems to work fine. I'll turn the engine off now and we'll see if that light goes out. Beautiful. Well, when it goes out, it's pretty much instantaneous and that's the most important part so we're not draining on that start battery. And the final mode to look at is AS Plus mode, which is similar to AS mode with the addition of a switch. Now the wiring differences, as well as the positive to pin 3, it also gets a positive to pin 5. In between pin 4 and the battery terminal positive, we have a manual switch. This is how it works. So we turn on the engine, we get that alternating current, lovely charging up our battery with a 14.2 volts. Beauty. The AC is also heading to pin 3, but our DC-DC doesn't turn on until we engage that manual switch, and then our DC-DC turns on, and we can get that charging goodness to our accessory battery from our DC-DC charger. Now, the only problem with this mode, both the engine needs to be running and the switch needs to be gauged. If one of them drops out, then your DC-DC turns off. Now, it's probably not going to be used for a DC-DC, but I can see this being used for something like a flashing light. It'd be fantastic there on a vehicle. So you could turn it on and the light would only start flashing when the engine's turned on. And then when you turn the manual switch off, the engine obviously would keep running, but the light would switch off. Beauty. Okay, and that's how that one works. So we're back bench testing the AS Plus mode. So just like before, we got our variable voltage power supply with the output on this multimeter. The output from the Easy As coming through the mushy meter to our phone here. The difference with wiring this time, just like before, in AS mode, pin 1 is earth or negative, pin 2 is our output, pin 3 is our input, pin 5 gets a positive, and pin 4, right on the side here, this is our switch line. And we'll just turn it on with a permanent jumper from our positive on the other side. There we go. So the switch is on. <laughs> okay, let's crank up some voltage, and we'll double check that it's not working in this scenario without the actual alternator working. So we're up on 12 volts. So we'll crank through to about 14 and a half or thereabouts. And we'll make sure this light doesn't illuminate. So again, we're up over 14 volts, nearly 14.8 volts or thereabouts. And it's not illuminating this light here so it's definitely not sensing the alternator in this scenario let's head out to the car again now we're in as plus mode or switched mode and as you can see <laughs> our switch in inverted commas isn't engaged so i'll start the engine and make sure she's not going to light up that lamp for us So we'll give it a couple of seconds because there was a delay when we tried it in standard AS mode. And we got 14 volts coming into the line here. And we got 14 volts. And we got just over 14 volts coming into our Easy As there. And we've got just over 14 volts coming into our Easy As relay there. So let's plug that switch in. And there you go, it was pretty much instantaneous. So I'll turn off the engine now, make sure that light goes out. And that light went out pretty instantaneously. So it looks like AS Plus mode works just fine. So what do we think in the end? Well, for me, going forward, it works pretty much as advertised. If you're running a DC-DC charger, this should be a compulsory part of your install until the likes of Victron Energy or maybe even Red Arc start paying GSL Electronics a royalty to integrate their technology into their DC-DC chargers. All right, guys, now if you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you didn't, by all means, give it a thumbs down. Not once, not thrice, but twice. Thanks, guys. We'll see you in the next one. So if you've enjoyed this content, don't forget to subscribe to the channel and ring that bell icon. It's really important to us and you won't miss out on our future content. Now, if you want to support the channel, by all means, consider becoming a patron on Patreon and you get things like early access to our videos on YouTube. Either way, we hope to see you out on the tracks.